Hello and welcome back to another episode of Oasis Top Tips. Did you know that the reported log file window can be used to help you debug issues when running reporter scripts and templates? Today I'm going to show you how you can use the log file in Reporter to help you debug reporter scripts. And as a side note, it can also help you when you run into problems running d3plot and dhis from within a reporter session. To bring up the log file, you first need to go open help and then log file. And you'll see the log file appear here. Now usually there's some messages that appear when you first open it, but I've already cleared them. So we just have a blank log file. Before we dig into the script that I've written on the left, I'm just going to point out some of the features of the log file window that are available from version 19 onwards. So firstly, we have these buttons that allow you to include the debug information from primer, d3plot and this. This can be really useful if you're running into problems when generating a report that are caused within one of these external programs. As an additional help, you can also request that the external programs don't exit after generating an item. And this can help you debug the problem live in the session. Note that it may be necessary to manually close the programs yourself once you're happy that you found the issue in order for the report to continue generating. If you toggle these settings, you'll see that some messages appear in the log window. And these parameters will be saved for you the next time you open up Reporter as well. There's also a toggle down the bottom here, which is usually checked, and that's to check for errors during report generation, which is typically what you'd want, but you may wish to deselect this. You also have the option to clear the log file window, which can make it easier to focus on just the output from the current item or report generation that you're attempting. And you can also save the output of the log file should you wish to return to it later. At the moment, we don't have any warnings or errors, but if we did, then we would be able to toggle up and down through them or select whichever error or warning we want by typing in the number into the text box here. Okay, so now we're ready to start actually writing some stuff to the log file ourselves. So I'll clear the log file window and then I'll show you the script I've written on the left. So the script is just trying to show you the different ways you can print to the log file and different variables and how to deal with them. So firstly, we have a string and it's a classic hello world string. And we're going to try and log print that to the log file window by just saying log print and then my string. Next, we have a number and we're trying the same. Then we have an array, which is just composed of the string and the number that we've already defined. And then lastly, we're also trying to print out an object which has the keys of the variable names and then the values of the variables that we've already defined. So we have a string, number and array. Once we've tried to print them, I'm also showing you different options we have. We have log error and log warning, and then also the debug print. And these are all the ways you can print to the log file when writing your own scripts. Okay, so I'm gonna just close this down temporarily and then show you that what I've got here is I've actually added a script file item, made it a button and given it a button name, and then I'm also pointing it to the script we have on the left here. So that any changes I make here and save will automatically be pulled in when I click on the button. Okay, so pressing P, I'm gonna click on the test logs and we can see that one of our items didn't generate properly. It has this button here, the script file item, and it gave an error. Would we like to see the error that was written to log file? If we click yes, then it will open up the log file. If we click no, then it won't, but we always have the option of going help open log file. Conveniently, I'm just gonna click yes because I want to have it open and we see that we we're trying to compile the script here. We executed the script. It managed to do the first two log prints, but it failed here at log print my array. So telling me that it's not a string. And so I need to convert that to a string. Now, helpfully, JavaScript has a to string function, which I can call. So I'm going to type dot to string. And then I'm going to move this window down so I can click on the button. And it's telling us, do we want to bring up the log file again? Now we already have it open, so it doesn't matter if I click yes, no, or cancel. I'm just going to click no. We already have it open here. And now we're seeing that it ran the script again, and we've got some more errors here. And this time it's telling me that argument one for log print is not a string, object, object. And that's because I'm trying to print an object, and that's not a string either. So what I could do is I could do something similar, and I could say dot to string there but it would just print out something that said object object. If I did that for you quickly now, save and then run again, we 
We now have no errors except for that one that we've requested, log error. And note that also gives us some nice color coding. So errors are red and warnings are kind of orange. And then we can toggle through the warnings or it's only one of them or the errors. We can go up and down through those. So if I just go to the last one here, we can see the last error. And it successfully managed to complete the script, but our object object isn't very helpful. It just tells me that it's an object. So what we have to do is we have to convert that into um, some string somehow. And the way we can do that is we can use the JavaScript object notation stringify function in order to convert this object into a string. So to do that, we just type json dot stringify and then put the object inside the brackets for that. And now when we run this, we get our output there. So my string, hello world, my number, one, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and our array output there, our error warning, and then also note when we uh, do a debug message, it prepends the word debug colon. Um, and so that could be useful if you had some debug stuff in your script. Firstly, if you wanted to search for it and replace it when you actually create production code, for example, but also if you actually save this out to a text file, you could then search through and find the debug messages and do it that way as well. Okay, so now we can see the use of the clear button because it's getting a bit messy here and it's kind of hard to see what's going on. So I'm just going to click clear and then run the test log. And now we can see a nice clean output there of what's happening and the script completed successfully. Okay, so I've not really used much of the reporter API here. This is all pretty much just pure JavaScript with the exception of the log statements and debug here, which is very similar to kind of a print statement that you might typically use. Now, yeah, but just to note that these require strings as inputs. They do manage to coerce numbers to strings, but anything like an array or an object, you need to do some conversion yourself. Okay, so I'm just going to create a quick toy example of a typical use case um, that I'm just going to make up. So let's say we wanted to get this table item and if it didn't exist, then we wanted to just let the user know that it didn't exist. So first of all, like in most of our scripts, we want to get the template. And so we just type var got t equals template dot get current. And that enables us to get the current template. And then we also want to get the page. So just the first page, so var page one equals, and then the template properly get page this time. And it's going to be the first page, so zero indexed. And then we want to go var and then table name. And so we want the name of this table. So I'm intentionally going to put it in wrong for now. That table is called results table. So if I went up, press P and then double click, it's results table, but I'm going to call it results tables just um, because I want to show you what happens if we try and look for something that doesn't exist, um, which could be a typical example. And then we want to get that table item. So let's get the table item. And that's an item dot get from name. So that's how we get something by its name. We need to give it its page, so that's page one, and then also the table name there. And then we want to do something with the table. So let's maybe change its width. So we'll just go table dot width equals, let's see what it currently is. So the width is currently 232. So let's half that and go for 100. 16. It's going to half its width. Okay. And then why not just make a, a log print message here to say finished changing table width or something like that. Okay. So now we're going to run that. So come over here, press P and then I'll clear this message and then run that. Okay, so we tried running it and it failed. We see this error message pop up telling us, do we want to look at the log file? We've already got that here, so I'll click no. And we can see the issue is that table is null, which we knew was the case anyway, because we knew it was results table, not results tables. And the log file is also helpfully given us some instructions about the line that it thinks is problematic. So line 21, and if we look there, table is null, we'd see where is table defined, oh, up there, and then we would kind of find the issue by working backwards and realize that table name wasn't actually valid. 
But what if we actually wanted to just ignore this error if it didn't work? Then what we typically do in JavaScript is we use try catch statements. So I'm just going to show you how you would do that in this case to allow the script to complete, but we'll handle the errors that we encounter. So to do this, we're going to write try, and then we need to wrap all of the stuff that we're trying inside curly brackets. So we've done there. And then we need to put a catch statement. And the catch statement takes an error. And then inside that, we can handle it. In this case, we might put log error. So let's take that out there. Pop that in here. And the error is error here. OK, now error is going to be um, of the class error. And that's not actually a string. So we need to convert that to a string and to do that, we just do dot to string there, and that allows us to print out the error. OK, so we're also now going to um, put in some more log print messages just to show that we managed to continue the script. So we'll say log print, and it say uh, failed to change table width or something like that. And then we say, uh, let's log print and just say, continuing with script here. Just to show it that it reaches this point. OK, now let's run this and click test log. And we see we got a type error, table is null, and that's the error here. And then a little message failed to change table width. And then continuing with script and the script finish. So we've managed to handle that error correctly. And just to show you that if there's no error thrown, it will work. I'm going to change the name of tables to table, save that, and then run. And now we've changed the width of our table, and we didn't get that failed. Instead, we got finished changing table width. So that's a way we can handle errors in our code and debug messages and print out things to the log file and use that to help us in writing scripts. So I hope you found that example useful and that you can implement some of these top tips and tricks in your own work. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time at the next Oasis Top Tips.